Hockey fans, we're on the air, the Minnesota Hockey Connection Show. We're at Pack TV Studios in Duluth, and it's, hey, Happy New Year's, everyone. It's January 3rd, 2022, and we got a special guest, Tim Cortez, the artist, the goalie, the used to be uh, assistant goalie coach for Duluth East, and we got a lot of things to talk about. First of all, Tim, Happy New Year's. Happy New Year's. Thanks for having me, Jerry. Yep. And Minnesota Hockey Connection and me personally want to send our condolences to your your brother just passed away in October and you guys are very close and another yeah. goalie when yep. goalies stick my, together my, uh, you know my uh, my brother and my best friend and uh, what a lot of people don't know is my younger sister passed just nine days later they wow. were both diagnosed with cancer right around the same time yeah. so it wasn't unexpected it just I think when she found out my brother went, sometimes that's right. You know that's the way it is, and they're in a better place. You hear that all the time, but right. it's uh, yeah. I had two brothers and my mom all passed from cancer at four, in, within fourteen months. Yeah, and well, you know they all went. About that. They all went fast. Yeah, you yeah. know when they got it, and it's sad, but it, it happens. Is, and you know you find out when they go fast that that's that's a blessing. Right. You know, that, that you hear that a lot, but now I can't. You just hope they don't have too much pain exactly. going through the end mm -hmm. there because a, the, a lot of that cancer is painful. Yes. So, hey, let's, um, the we, reason I really want you on this show and thank you for coming is, hey, we have, I think we have a major goaltending problem in this state of Minnesota. And I want to know your ideas how to maybe fix this. I mean, well, uh, you know, I don't think it's just in the state of Minnesota. I think USA Hockey is really having a problem advancing goaltenders with the with the surge of you know European goaltenders, especially from Finland. I mean, they got a goaltender factory over there, and the Russians. Um, USA Hockey, I know, is making a big push to try to get everybody on board on the same program. Um, it's getting lost in the shuffle at some point where, you know, it's not that there's not opportunities for kids. We'll just take Minnesota, for example. There's a lot of good goalie schools in Minnesota. Now, part of the problem for me with high school hockey is obviously the schedule. You're only playing 20 plus games where a kid can play out on the West Coast or in, in Canada and get a 60 game schedule or even go you know, to the NA or USHL. The USHL if they're fortunate enough. Right. Um, but those are 60 game pro schedules and it makes right. a difference. Right. Uh, another thing is I, I think, I mean, I was a goalie coach for seven years at, with Mike Randolph at East. There was a lot of teams who don't have goalie coaches. And I think they're making a mistake ignoring that position. Right. People ignore that position because most coaches are not goalies. They didn't come from right. that, and they don't. They're like, you know what? I don't know anything about goaltending. Just go in and stop the puck. Well, you need a little bit more than that. You need somebody to be there to be your advocate in the coach's room to, you know, take that special time with you at practice and work on your development. You don't just go in there and stop pucks. That's not. There's a way more to the position than that. Like, uh, I, I remember you when your goalie coach for Duluth East just mm -hmm. recently, I mean, that you got all these goalies, five, six goalies that you're working on, and mm -hmm. it seems like everyone's a different personality, everyone does it a different way, and yep. so as a goalie coach, what do you do when you see these kids that, I mean, different personalities and different styles of... Well, for me, that's the fun of it, is... At East, we always had five. We carried five goalies, and I wanted to make sure I knew every one of them individually, from the lowest guy on the ladder, who, as you know, can end up being the top guy within a year, much like Brody Rabel did 
that one year. Uh-huh. Uh, so it's, it's, I need to know everybody. And for me, goaltending is a lot more about what's between your ears than it is about, about movement. If you're a good enough athlete, you're going to figure out the X's and O's of, of the crease, okay? And, of course, we worked on that, and it's just repetition, repetition, repetition. But when the lights come on and you're playing in front of 8,000, 9,000 down at, <laughs> down at Amsoil, yeah. who's going to have the uh, – Who's going to have it right here? Who's going to have to compete in them? Right. That's what I try to find in my, my goalies at any level. Right. It's uh, amazing. Hey, I mean, just recently, I'm just looking at just some goalies that you coach. Uh, um, Callaway moved up to Hermantown. He's playing excellent. Yeah. Sophomore. And Xander, I think, is playing way uh, better than i yeah. seen him yeah. this year. Even though they're losing games. I'm telling you, he's getting 40, 50 shots a game. And people don't understand, these are not 40, 50 shots from the perimeter. These are teams that are a lot better than Duluth (laughs) East, and there's going to be a lot of odd man and coming in all alone. And Second and third rebounds. And if you've got to watch the game to see this, you know, I'm not a goalie man. I mean, I just sit, like you say, I say just stop the puck, and I don't know how you do it. There's something very different and very beneficial about being a goaltender on a on a hard on a hard team okay so if you're seeing 40 50 shots a game all of and you're playing well and people are taking notice a lot more people are saying okay go watch this kid because you're going to see him play because he's going to get 45 shots tonight against Grand Rapids at least and it's a time for that kid to shine and when a goaltender Get selfish. I used to tell my guys, be selfish all you want. A selfish goaltender can only help your team. It's not like you're going to be hogging the puck or anything. You're going to, the, the best you can be for your own, whatever purposes, is only going to help your team. And when you're into that position, you know every game's going to be a shooting gallery. You're into it real soon. And then the first five minutes, it's on. Now it's just a game. Now it's just try to beat me. That's how I always looked at it. I never got nervous playing those games. Now, when you're sitting in the other end and you're seeing 10 shots a game, which East always used to have right. back in the 90s and stuff, right. when they were before they went Very independent, defensive. nobody was looking at those goalies. What, what, what's right. to go look at? Right. You know, they didn't, they didn't have to play. <laughs> so that's the difference with that. And I'm proud of all those boys. Callaway, Xander, I mean, I miss them. I wish I was still coaching them. Yep. I would love to again someday. I think they all have a future if they want. And I, I was kind of surprised. Um, I, I watch all kinds of hockey from the wild, from the pros all the way down to Bantams and that. And uh, the Minnesota Wilderness and the NA just brought in uh, Conrad Kosh. Yeah. And he was nothing his junior year, and his dad just wanted him to play a varsity game almost, you know. <laughs> yeah. And then all of a sudden he's playing a senior year. Yeah. And... Now, then he went out east and he played a few games and he was stopping 95% of the shots. And so the wilderness were having problems. Opportunity. Opportunity. Knocks. This kid's the best example of that. And for one, he's the hardest working kid I've ever had. Him and Callaway are a lot alike. Uh-huh. They just don't, they don't, they can't get enough hockey. They can't stay long enough on Love the Love the ice. game. Yep. And those are the kind of guys that you have to have. So his dad said, said okay, you got one year of hockey after high school to go try to make it. And that was in the, the I'm not even sure what league it was, NA3 maybe? Yeah. And that's, pay to play. that's tough, pay to play. And he did really well. So his dad goes, ah, okay, we'll do one more. <laughs> and the kid just ate up the league. Yeah. And Kevin Smalley, I said, watch this kid. Don't forget him. Write his name down. And when you get a chance, Give him a call. Give him a shot. Right. And that's exactly what they did. I told Kevin the did, same and thing. And they went and dominated. I just told yeah. him, you better bring this kid back here. Yeah. A few times I told Kevin and yeah. that too. And well, yeah. he's playing good, you know, and you guys are having problems. You're he's not, a winner. It's not going to hurt you. He's a gamer, and I hope he makes it. I hope he gets a college scholarship. Well, he him. played three games. He came in the first game, and I think he lost 3 nothing. And then the second game, he won 2-1. to one. Mm-hmm. Then he played the other night, and he left the first two goals in the number one team in the league. I mean, in their division, yeah. Fairbanks. Yep. And 
the first period, and they tied. He didn't yeah. let another goal in the rest of the game, so yep. he kept the team there, Gave and they a came back. To win. Yep. And then they came back and tied, and they got a point. Yeah, you know? he's uh, <laughs> he's living his dream. And yep. I said, don't you know? I talked to him quite a bit, and when, especially when he got the call back home, you know, to come back home. I know his parents missed him being that far away for two years. Yep. So the parents were it's to static, the moon probably. about it. Yeah. yeah. And of course, nervous, like right. all goalie parents. Right. Oh, yeah. But I told Connor, I said, no, this is just the next step. No, you no, you have another goal. Well, tell us the bio of you when oh. you started uh, being a goaltender in that. Well, I, I started, uh, I grew up uh, in the same neighborhood you did, right? Okay. Portman, playing at Portman. Uh, Duluth Portman Rink um, played goal. Lower Chester and Central Field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had uh, a few Williams Williams boys uh, that we played against yeah. me and my brother. Uh, but it it started at Portman. I think I played one year of just learning to skate, and then I was right in the goal because I followed my brother. Well, I just wanted to do what he did. Uh -huh. And up through we, you know, me and my brother were pretty good. You know, made the teams going all the way up and through Duluth East, and uh, he went on to Dubuque in the USHL for two years. I played the next two years for US in, in Dubuque. That's I mean, funny. we were really That's following each Everyone other. Everyone knows there's a Cortez in the yeah, net. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of <laughs> neat, and it was rare. I think we hold the record. Me and my partner at Dubuque, I think, hold the record for the goalies who stayed on one team the longest. We never got traded for two years, wow. and we had a great partnership. But, uh, no, and then uh, – you know, me and my brother always wanted to play against each other in college if we got there. <laughs> he played for UNB. I chose to bypass a couple of different offers that I had to Denver and St. Cloud. And right. I said, I'm going to go walk on at the U. Somebody got in my ear and said, hey, we think you could play here. Okay. Well, so did Rob Stauber. He took it. <laughs> so, yeah, I always tease because <laughs> out of the three of Hope us that were there her. my freshman oh. year, it was me, John Blue, Robbie Stop. Wow. Two of us ended up in the NHL and one of us ended up at art school. <laughs> <laughs> you could guess who was which, but <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. But uh, to me, I, I don't know who would want to be a goaltender all by yourself. And a lot of people say, I, you don't want to go to a goalie and try to get in their bubble. They're in a different uh, breed and they're a different mind. And it's a delicate uh, dance for any coach. Um, it's hard enough for a goalie coach as a as a you know as a head coach or a defensive coach. Don't even don't even attempt it because you're not gonna it'll be a fail. It's you gotta you just really I've I've learned to do it because I've coached a lot of kids and it's there's a very it's a gr little gray line that you can't uh, right. you can't try to get too far into their head and, and like you said every kid is different right you know and so I kind of pride myself when I coach. I'm getting to know the kid, you know. I I can I can always work on the on the skills with everybody. Right. It's trying to figure out who's going to have the who's going to have the 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 winner the winning attitude the when, they, when it counts. Yeah. Yeah. Who's going to get you a state tournament? Right. Who's gonna, you know. You got to decide that by the playoff time. Yeah, you know, exactly. You got, you got this is my goal to guy. And, and like I said, at East, kids came out of nowhere. I mean, I had one kid, Parker Clive. His junior year, who had to have quit in the midseason and do double hip surgery. Yeah, I well, we're that. like, you're not coming back. And he just said, "You guys watch, I'll come back." And he took us to the state championship <laughs> the next year. That kid's amazing. He's fighting fires out in the, the yeah. yeah, doing the smoke jumping. Wow, I think. Wow, amazing. Yeah, yeah. and then you know Brody Rabel as well. Okay, let's um, get to um, high school. Doesn't really have enough games. Yeah. Now goaltending, I mean, if you want to get to the next level, like you say, you got to play. You don't yep. play, you don't develop. Yep. And I mean, I'm sure you can do a lot on practice, but practice is not the same as game day. No. And what's the difference, you think, that when you were playing at East in the 80s, mm -hmm. mid 80s, basically? Yep. 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 And um, and now with the problem, you know, like. Coach Randolph, uh, what he went through with parents and that, you know, it's just a, it just uh, amazes me how high school hockey or any level from high school all the way down is controlled by parents so much and 
how can that be? It's, uh, I'll tell you the difference is, uh, it's become very, <clears throat> all the parents and families, not all, of course, but it's become very self-serving. People are coaching teams to advance their kid. That didn't go on back when, when I was young, okay? The parents mostly stayed out of it. They were coaching at the lower levels, like they always Let do. you have fun. Yeah, let that. But once it got into serious competition, that's like at Pee Wee's, when you start traveling and you're doing the big, long schedules, let somebody else handle that. That's, that's gone away, and that was, I'll say it right here, that was part of the reason um, Mike Randolph got let go. He wasn't gonna, there wasn't gonna be any parent, parental control on his team. You're welcome to come in and talk to him right. and set a meeting with him, uh, but they, you weren't controlling the lineup. You He's the coach. Yep. And, and that's the way it should be. There was people coming up that didn't want, they didn't want it like that. And it was parents that had played at, at high levels who felt that they had more to offer. And that's just, it can't, it can't work that way because people by nature, I believe, will start promoting their own kid. Right. And that's the whole reason behind it. Well, I talked to him this last week, and he's really enjoying it down in the cities yeah. and that, and the kids and that. And he says, so far, no parents are, no, no problem so far. Different. And he says, the Twin City hockey is so different than up yeah. here yeah. of what they have, the opportunity down there, what they have, and sure. what they have up here. What they have in their neighborhoods. Just and to... uh, I'm just, uh, I just looked at the, some <clears throat> records here, I mean, I'm really worried about hockey in up north now, oh, yeah. outside of the Twin Cities. Yep. I look at look at Duluth East, one eight and one. I mean, they've had some injuries and that, so I give them credit. You know, they played a very good game against Blaine on Saturday. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. so maybe they're coming back. We'll see when they play Rapids on sure. Thursday. I mean, but Denfield is playing real good. But I know they don't have the players coming up after this year. So your last hurrah is what people are you know, saying. And that's and no offense to the kids coming no. up. I don't. And uh, Duluth Marshall, 2-8-1. Hermantown, I think, is going to be good no matter yeah, what no because matter of what they, they're, the way they do their they're program. They're on cruise control, yeah. Okay, Proctor's playing a lot better and it's the first yeah. time they've been over 500 in a long time. Good for them. North Shore, 3-6. and six. Rock Ridge, when they combine two schools, they still fight for 500. Four and five, you'd think they'd be a lot better. Whoa. Um, International Falls two and seven, Hibbing three and six. Ely's been bad yeah, for years. Yeah. Two and eight. Uh, Lake of the Woods four and three. Greenway three and three. <laughs> Grand Rapids is good, but they're going down. But I've been looking at the double A teams and Bantams. It's not good. No, it's not good. I've been looking at some of the records. Cloquet yeah. is going down hill. Mm -hmm. There, I mean, there's talk. There are rumors that they might go back down to A. Well, it could be. I mean, isn't that sad? Yeah, it is. It is sad. It it is. I don't know. Um, I'm. I hear that the the teams out east are, or out west are pretty good. Northwest, like uh, Morehead and Moore, well, Morehead, look like they're no. They're going to be good, good for, for a few while. years. Yeah. I think they're the best program in the state, and I yeah. think that's. I think it's coming down in five years that they might be the only program that can. Well, compete every a lot year. of that has that to do every with, year. with tradition. Even if they do have some years that they're down, like East did, sometimes your tradition and your sense of pride gets you through some of that stuff. I'll take 2015 at Duluth East, for right. example. That was not their most talented team. And they made it to a legendary state championship. Right, beating Edina. If you get into get into like a rock. Oh, the way they came back at St. <laughs> Thomas, and then um, I mean, yeah, they had some problems with North, and they gave it all they had. But with that North. was riding on pride and tradition, right? And and, and and Moorhead will have that same thing. Grand Rapids will have that same thing all the time. I've been doing rankings for many years, and because I see more high school games than anyone, oh, yeah. Yeah. and so, but I have a theory, and it's worked very well for me. I know who the top coaches are. I give extra credit if you, you're in one of the teams that have the best coaches in the state. I give mm -hmm. extra credit to um, returning people. If you have yeah. some elite, how many elite players? I give extra credit on your schedule, big time. Sure. That that, that that's schedule. A, that's how such Duluth a small East, schedule. Yeah. That Duluth East program changed overnight when yes. Coach Randolph started Took going to the cities mm -hmm. and playing all the top teams that 
for a while there before the Link Lake Conference got together yeah, and there yeah. five teams, Duluth East was the top, I mean, scheduling program yeah. in the state. Yeah, yeah. And now, look at Edina. I'm just looking at Edina. How are they doing this year? Yeah, they're doing good, but here's the thing. 11 of their next uh, 13 games are with top 15 teams. Can't duck it down there. Then, <laughs> then, but No, but then there's Lakeville South only has one. Oh, really? So everyone likes Lakeville South, but if you don't play these teams, I don't, I don't see how a team like that can win four tough games in a row. Yeah, they're That's not, not going to have the you're compete not used, under, their, under their... Right. Rapids is a... They're going to... I give them a good chance because they they got seven tough games. How's Andover doing? Andover they're, doesn't... They're a very good team, mm -hmm. but they only have two. Oh, okay. Maple Grove. I mean, Maple Grove has five at least. Well, you got so. this analyzed down, don't you? I can see. <laughs> yeah, no. But a lot of people, I mean, I think right now there can be six teams at number one. It doesn't matter who you put there. You sure, know, yeah. it's still early and that's half the season. But I think scheduling is a big point. And then coaching. I mean. Yeah. Well, so. I'll tell you something about scheduling, too, is you had, those are also relationships that you have to build. Right. You know, uh, okay, yeah, well, we put him, no, this guy, I don't care for this guy. I don't want him on our schedule right. anymore. And yeah. Then, you know, right. I, I've seen that happen. Oh yeah, and um, and you don't know everybody. One year to the next, yeah. you might have them scheduled for two years out, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden that team is no good. To, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, and, it happens. And then mm -hmm. you all of a sudden you reschedule them another two years, and then before you know it, that that team is not good anymore. That's <laughs> why I, I I love the guy coach with Louis Krenzen. He he was basically. The hockey secretary yeah. at East, and right. he was a pro at it. And he had all the relationships. Yeah, he had all the equipment connections, all the jersey connections, which was important. <laughs> yeah, and that's, yeah, that's all stuff you need. Louis you did a great job. Yeah, 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 yep. So your work is a, being an artist, sports, yes. mostly sports, mostly sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and. Uh, what are some of the biz, biggest uh, projects you've oh, done? Oh, I got a probably. few that I'm pretty proud of. Uh, I did uh, the 125th anniversary for Notre Dame football. They saw some oh, of I my saw that work, one, yeah. yeah, and they got a hold of me and asked me if I'd be interested in doing that, and um, of course I would, and that was quite an experience. I went down to all the home games. They brought me down there, and it was I'm a Great huge atmosphere. Notre Dame fan. Yeah, though. I go on campus. <laughs> that campus is amazing. Oh, it's it's a whole nother level yeah. of college you're in, sports. You're in South Bend and what? Yeah, what South Bend is Ugh. not good. But when you get on campus, yeah. oh, what a beauty! Everything going to <laughs> the church, the dome, stone. every looks, every yeah. building's the same. The neatest thing I think I've ever seen in college sports is it was late night and it was um, before one of their first games, so it was still nice down there in the fall. Right. All of a sudden, I hear all this drumming going on in the courtyard, you know, right in front of the dome. Well, I walk down there and they do this inside the dome, the drum line in the dome, students, <laughs> the place was crazy. Yeah, I've been to a lot oh, of games Oh, that's there. neat. Oh, yeah, yeah. I so love that, it. that was probably my biggest highlight. I did um, the centerpiece for the Twins Champions Club in, the, in, the, in, the new, in their new stadium. And you did so, that when they first opened the stadium, right? right? Yep, right when they nice. finished it the day they opened, actually. And so that was quite a deadline. It uh, that was a good one. I, I I did some individual artwork for, for. I have a piece in the Smithsonian too. I always forget to mention. Really? Yeah, I did the 35th anniversary of the Bear Grease. One oh, of the people. Okay. Somebody brought it up to the Iditarod, and some people from the Smithsonian saw it and said, "Hey, we're going to do a display of American dog sled racing. Would you like to have this in there?" Of course, I would. <laughs> <laughs> So it's in their permanent connect collection now. So. so any big hockey things you have you done? Oh yes, uh, you know a lot of individuals. Mike Badano, Chris Chelios, probably three for Brett Hall. Wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know the hockey world. It's this big. Do you um, still sell prints? I, I, that stuff. Yeah, or? I do. I do. Most of my work through. I've had my own studio for thirty years. Almost 95% of it was just private commissions. Right. And it's been weird because I have not had to have the big giant website right. or the advertising. It's all been word of mouth. But if someone wants to buy something of yours, is there a, yeah, a website, a website to go to? Yeah, what is you it? just go to timcortez.net. 
Cortez, C O R C O R T E S. T I M C O R T E S dot net. Dot net. And that's my dot website. Com. Dot net. Yeah, dot net. It used to be dot com, but someone okay. stole my domain. So, Ooh. Oh, yeah. You were a little late. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't me. Wasn't me. Um, uh, also, on Facebook, go to my Facebook fan page, Tim Cortez Studio. You can always get a hold of me through that. Okay. Let's get back to goaltending. Yes. How can we help out? The Northland, what does the Northland have to do, do you think, to help the game of hockey and get and uh, develop some goaltending at an early age? Okay, well, that's I'm glad you brought that up because that's where we're stumbling is you go down to the rinks right now. For one, parents don't want their kids to be goalies, unless they were goalies, then they mm -hmm. won't mind. But the cost is outrageous. However, most Almost all the rinks have equipment now for the kids, and they replace it every couple of years. So uh -huh. it's not the bad stuff. Right. If we could get groups like CCM, Bauer, um, any of the other big right. goalie manufacturers to dump some of their old model equipment, because they only want their new model equipment out there, right. start donating that back to even the older kids. Right. Ban them. You know, right. to reduce the cost. Right. Then you get a kid hooked on goaltending uh -huh. if he's going to play it a few years. Right. And that's what we have to do. We're just not seeing. People don't realize this game doesn't exist without goaltending. Unless mm -hmm. you want to play pond hockey the rest of right. your life, you need goalies. So that's where we start is start getting kids interested at at the might level. Right. And um, you know, there's like I said, Robbie Stauber's had his goalie school forever and. It's, Probably the best one in the country. Gold right? Crease? Yeah. Yeah, I'm down Gold Crease. Crease. Yeah, I've been and now we that have one. one. Terrence Linzik started one that I work for, is Goalies Matter. And we got Robbie Anderson. Up here? Yeah, yep. Patty, um, Patty Sauter that I coached at, okay, uh, yeah. at uh, UMD. UMD. Yeah. And we were lucky enough to have all the UMD men's goalies join our crew last summer. My girls up at Scholastic could join the crew. So okay. it was nice because now we don't have to be demonstrating stuff at 55 years old. Uh -huh. We got these young guys on their skates and their pads. Right. And the kids, you know, they see the UMB guys. <laughs> it's nice. It's a nice setup. But we're, we're trying our best just to get kids, to get parents interested in it. Right. You know? Well, Tim. God, I can't believe that half an hour went already. The half now. hour, huh? We've got to get you back on the show and talk more about goaltending and how we can help the game of hockey and develop uh, and make some of these teams a lot better because sure. I tell you what, if you don't have that foundation, it's it's a tough game. <laughs> <laughs> and you get a lot of coaches. It's, you get it's a lot of coaches. Hockey if you, you don't have lot, that foundation. You get a lot of coaches upset. Yeah. So that's it for today at the Minnesota Hockey Connection. Um, thank you, Tim Cortez. And... Uh, We'll see everyone at the rink. Thank you, Jim and Vicki and Lisa, Liz at uh, Pack TV Studios. See you at the rink. See you next week. Thanks, Jer. Mm.